Boom. Welcome to the fine print, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Caleb Teske, and today I'm joined by Kelly Katana from Hot Mess Glass. Kelly, thank you for being here with me today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is awesome. Now, um, I've got some requests to bring you on here. Um, wow, cool. Yeah, I feel like maybe um, the higher elevation guys had, had mentioned you, or uh, or Dusty, maybe, out in Cambridge. Great, um, I appreciate that. Yeah, so um, I, I usually start every episode with a, a five-minute life story, if you wouldn't mind. Maybe tell us a, a bit about your background. Um, so I was born in upstate New York, right across the lake here. Um, but I grew up in the Midwest where cannabis was very, very illegal. Um, in the 2010s, I moved to Plattsburgh right across the lake. And I was a newspaper photographer there for about a decade. Yeah, cool. Then, you, mentioned, you mentioned that, huh? You, you yeah. did a little journalism? Uh, for a long time, I did. Awesome. Yep. Cool. And um, cannabis was a way for me to deal with the stresses of that job. So, um, so while I was at the newspaper, I played roller derby with, um, someone whose husband blew glass and his name is Aaron Zeal. He's right across the lake, a local as well. Um, so that kind of just kickstarted the hobby of glass blowing. Cool. So, um, I had like a whole mental thing at the newspaper. It wasn't for me anymore. And I just picked up glass blowing full time after that. Um, I worked for five years in Tammy Ball's studio right outside of Lake George, New York. And now I'm in Burlington, Vermont, working in Kurt B's studio. And where is that at? I'd like to stop by sometime and, and see you guys. We actually have a super private studio. Okay, cool. Um, a no lot of glass blowing studios, especially in the past. Um, it was super underground. Nobody came into the bong right. shop. So as of like maybe seven, seven years ago, um, I worked with Manifest Glassworks, which was a bong shop down in the Lake George area. And no one had ever stepped foot in that place really? no shit. for 15 years like wow. nobody went into the nobody knew where it was nobody no pictures in there um super super private so we okay. still have a lot of that um re residual privateness here in burlington hey respect yeah yeah no we i don't, don't, I don't blame of, you like, pictures <laughs> or anything like that in our studio so as you can cool. see now. all right cool respect kelly <laughs> Now, yeah. you, you said you're from the Midwest. I can imagine, um, you, like you said, out there, um, it's a different climate in terms of cannabis. Like, wh what's it like sort of growing up? And I see some of your pipes that I was looking at your website. It looks like you got some out there in Illinois. And uh, Oh, yeah. Um, so when I grew up, even having a pipe was like jail time, like, uh more than a misdemeanor so even sure. you know small quantities of cannabis were super illegal um oh, shoot what was the question <laughs> i was just wondering what it was like growing up uh, out there you know because vermont's always sort of been kind of i bet more laid back than the midwest right. in terms of cannabis so um, I feel like it's had like a lot of lasting effects on me growing up there. Like I spent all my teenage years out there and, um, you know, I still hide my bongs in my own house. Like, um, I grew up with it being super private. Like nobody would even know, um, that I was growing or smoking or anything like that. And it, it, it was just totally a different climate. Like I got a lot of trouble in my young years and that kind of, you know, kept me away from being a part of the cannabis scene for a lot of years because I was a newspaper reporter and it was super illegal. Uh. I just, you know, it was just such an underground thing that I, you know, was a pipe maker or that I was a cannabis enthusiast or all those things. Hmm. So nobody at the newspaper knew about that? No. Wow. I mean, I'm sure they had their inklings, but, <laughs> you know, 
to be honest, I had, you know, a house full of weed in a very illegal state and being a part of the socialite, you know, um, world, not people not knowing like my, my real life, it was like living a double life, you know, so always being paranoid that I was going to get caught and be in like my own newspaper. Now I can say that. <laughs> you, know, oh, like, uh, <laughs> you have to write about yourself. Yeah. Living, <laughs> living that double life, you know, it was really crazy. So <laughs> did, I'm did so have, glad to be in Vermont. I was going to say, did that have anything to do with why you moved out here? Um, absolutely. So yeah, I was in Plattsburgh for a long time and I loved it there, but Burlington's a little bit got more of the artistic scene, sure. yeah, like yeah. a lot more artists. There's a studio here for me to work. So, um, and there's a, a, a growing cannabis community here too. So I was going to say as a, as a glass blower, now this is like, you know, I remember going into head shops when I was a kid or well, it was 18, you know, but before right. they raised the smoking age. But, you know, it would always say these are for tobacco use only. And now I see like Tito. He's like, no, this is for weed. So like, use only. Yep. yeah, which which must be nice for you guys, because I'm sure for a long time there, there you were feeling some some legal pressure, at least to like hide that shit, not get caught, you know. Right. So <clears throat> for a lot of years, um, we never mailed pipes. Oh, sorry. We're getting out of juice here so we in a lot of when i first started we didn't really mail pipes because that's still federally illegal right. especially to some states in the south so we would drive the products around to the head shops ourselves or we would mail to someone in a safe state and they would drive it around which wow. is still how i kind of do it i'm uh in over a hundred stores I, know, I, was looking at the, so, I was looking at the list. Yeah, you got a lot of product out there. A lot of product out there. It's a full time job, <laughs> and it's some really beautiful stuff. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, where's the closest retailer I could buy some of that stuff at? Um, where are you now? Oh, I'm in Morrisville, so probably Dusty's probably got a little, huh? Uh, Dusty has some, and I'm planning to go to higher elevation. Hopefully, sometime in the next week. Oh, I've cool. been stocking up stuff for them in my uh, spare time so uh yeah that's the probably the two closest places you can get it there and then here in burlington you can get it at green state gardener fern gallery right. and northern lights northern, okay cool yeah all right. all right cool um what else was oh i had another question there um you said you're also a grower a little bit huh you, you know out. I never really got into growing when I was young. It was really, really difficult because it was so illegal. So, and the criminal aspect of it, you know, it's hard to describe, but especially in the Midwest, it had the air of being a criminal about you. So... Yeah. Uh, I never really got into it. I would start and then something would happen. You know, I'd, I'd get to a certain point and have to tear it down. So in my younger life, I never really got a chance to do that. Hmm. You know, it, it you know, uh, so, but in, as I moved into Vermont, I started trading in genetics and helping people find things that they can't get Whoa. because- all right. As a glass blower, I have access to things that other people don't. So I'm not really a grower. I'm just a, a an enthusiast about elite cannabis. Word up. This is how I would how I would <laughs> describe it. I would love to have a chance to to grow on my own. Um, hopefully that'll be something I can do in the future. Mm. And and you know I've had a lot of women mention to me the sort of troubles they've had to sort of getting a foothold in the cannabis industry and i'm oh, curious on what i'm curious if you have any thoughts on that as as it pertains to like being out in the midwest and now being out in vermont well you know i spent a lot of my time in new york um oh, also so i was 
very young, like in my teenage, early 20s out in the Midwest. So as a woman, I found myself more in positions of processing. Like I've done a lot of trimming work, which, you know, in some cases, you know, these were people that were okay with breaking the law. So in a lot of cases, it was dealing with the, you know, not so savory people. Yeah. So being in trim camps and doing that sort of stuff was really difficult because, you know, a lot of times you're driving with product in your car, you know, it was all a risk. People were super paranoid about getting robbed or caught, you know, so as a woman, you know, you're already not so much in a position of power and then you're put into, you know, situations where you're not making a lot of money, but you're taking huge risks. Right. Um, as thing, as I've moved into Vermont and things are more acceptable, it's been a completely different story. Yeah. Like the safe jobs to have, there's, you know, places you can be and, do processing and have health insurance so it's completely completely different cool to what i grew up with oh well that's good to hear i'm I'm curious to get that perspective from a lot of the women that i've interviewed you know and it does seem like um vermont at least i have a lot of qualms still with the way things are playing out here but it does seem like it's a safe environment to work in, at least, you know? Much, it's so much safer than even, you know, five years ago. Mm-hmm. So that that's something I'm really excited about. And all the dispensaries that are opening with um, uh, female ownership, it's amazing. Mm. That is nice to see. And, yeah. you know, I see the um, buy weed from women's shirts or whatever, uh, different kind of shirts like that. Yeah, yeah. Good. I, I like to see everybody getting in the mix. That seems like the one nice thing about the cannabis industry is that everybody could get involved. You know, there's like such a broad um, rate. Well, in Vermont, it's not quite as diverse, you know, but it seems like right. if it's an industry that has a lot of different colors and different kinds of people, you know. And- Absolutely. And in Vermont here, you know, it's really small, but there are some great um cannabis companies that are doing sorry there's a lot of people in here but uh (laughs) that's all right (laughs) losing my train of thought um (laughs) there are a few companies with uh minority ownership and leadership and i'm so excited to see that Hmm. Hmm. i know a couple of them right right yeah for such a small area i think we're doing great and i would love to see more Hmm. Oh yeah, right on. Um, well, Kelly, I'm kind of just winging this one. Uh, That's I really, okay. I, yeah, I, I really like that you you called me up and we got this uh, on the books here. Um, do, do you have anything interesting you like to dump out here? Because um, I want to I want to get oh yeah, I I feel like enough people out here like you that they told me to talk to you. So you must have That's some great. some wild shit to say or something. <laughs> you know. I've been a cannabis smoker since the 90s and, you know, I've been around and I just love how Vermont is coming together, even though, you know, the laws need some work and, um, you know, it's just starting to bloom really here in comparison to some of the other closer states. Um, I'm excited to see, like, what what everybody's going to do. You know, there's so many facets to the industry that people can take part in, um, you know, from processing to growing to retail sales, all of that. It's just a ex- really exciting time. Especially for a glassblower, it seems like you guys might have some extra work right now. Oh, totally. So I usually use distributors because I'm in so many stores. Um, but I'm excited to like get back out there and go visit the local shops and show them what I have. It just takes me a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of, everywhere yeah. in Vermont you drive to is at least an hour, it seems like. Right. Yeah, you know? totally. <laughs> and I'm also serving, you know, 
other legal states close to us, Maine, Massachusetts, um, and my distributors go all over all over America. So it's it's really cool. I know. I was gonna say I got I got the list right here. It was like Jesus. It's not Christ. a complete list. Yeah, I, <laughs> I try my best to keep up on it, but wow, it's so hard to keep track of. That's awesome. I mean, to to be able to like finally because i mean i feel like glass blowers particularly have kind of taken a lot of shit unnecessarily you know from just it's making different. tobacco products <laughs> you just know, being or... tobacco products right. but also you know for cannabis use i i mean i grew up as a criminal so to be in such an open space in vermont is um definitely very freeing for me you know, yeah. al although I do kind of keep to myself still, like a lot. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> I don't get out there much. Yeah. Hey, you're probably working, I'm guessing. Yeah. And it's <laughs> definitely, it's definitely a lifestyle more than a job, you know, where I'm going to events all the time, all over the East Coast. So traveling a lot um, with my torch and tools. Nice. Um, we do a lot of shows like that. Oh, uh, the Pipe Classic? Um, did, you, did you check out any of that? Oh, man. I've been going to the Pipe Classic since, like, Pipe Classic 6. So awesome. I've been there every year for a long time since I uh, I lived in Plattsburgh and would come over for the week just for it when I lived over there. And it was one of my favorite events in all of the Northeast. It really gave us all a chance to come together and have an intimate setting where we could get to know each other for over the week. Like a lot of other glass blowing events are only one day long, maybe a weekend at most, but Pipe Classic really was, you know, somewhere where we'd all come, you know, to Vermont and Burlington for, for the week and just, you know, talk glass and meet collectors and, oh man, yeah. I'll, be missing, I'll be missing it. Outrageous talent over there. Oh, absolutely. The best in the world, really. They really had the best uh, glass blowers in the world. And, you know, a lot of collectors, like big name collectors. I know. Too. I see Higher Elevation bought one of those pieces uh, from um, Kayla. Windstar. Oh, my God. Yeah, she is amazing. Absolutely. She's a monster. Uh, when I was watching her handle, she, oh, that thing she made, I was like, she was grabbing it and just putting it in the oven. And I was like, careful. <laughs> right? Yeah. These things are big and fragile and hot. So they yeah. really do an amazing job. It's like, it's a little bit different than what I do, but oh my goodness, they all have so much talent. Yeah. That's just, that's just like really extravagant. I like, I, I don't even think I would like to have a pipe like that. I feel like I would break it and you know, like that's straight up for the display case right there. Yeah, definitely for the display <laughs> case. And I, I like to focus making um, pipes for the everyday smoker. It really, yeah, it really excites me. You, you look, you, it looks like you have some very functional glass here. That's also just really nice looking. Well, thank you. Some and nice I really foods. try to do make the best quality thing and keep it affordable so everybody can have access to it. That's really so important to me because you know, a lot of people don't have the same privilege that I do and may not be able to afford expensive pieces. So I try to keep things in my product line that are accessible to everyone. Oh, well, I really that's, take very, pride in that. that's very thoughtful of you. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. I'm still smoking a $40 spoon. Yeah, that's right. Like, everybody, everybody needs it. And it's, it's, it's a really important thing to have in our community. I feel like it's hmm. a, good a, way to consume their cannabis i got a chris hickory one e over there That's yeah nice. he's the most collectible in all of vermont well super well known amazing cool. artist yep and yeah. person i like chris yeah yeah totally well Kelly, that's about all I got for you. I always all leave right. the last. Word, I always leave the last word for my guests here. Um, and thank you so much for your time. I hope we can follow right. this up, and maybe I could get a pipe from you sometime. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, but I always leave the last word for my guests. So this is all you. Thanks so much. Thanks. I just want to say, you know, thanks for having me, and enjoy the rest of your day. Hell yeah, short that's and sweet. Right. I like it, Kelly. Yeah.
Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. All right.